view the body almost like a, a bucket. And what we're trying to do is just bring the bucket to full and not spilled over and not like slightly empty and flat. So we're just trying to fill the bucket. So every day I might start out with actually okay, let look if we want to get shredded and step on stage or do a photo shoot and look good at that moment of time we all do a peak week right so that that's something that's just not that clear in the literature it's not like they tested out bodybuilders and say hey this is what works because it's different with everyone um I, i'm just i was curious about how you handle it to uh to get into that diced shape peak, for sure peaking. so yeah there was only like there's very few peaking uh kind of uh i guess studies out there and the latest one was with um oh, scott stevenson was probably the kind of prime i don't think he was the key author but i think he influenced the paper a lot and i had him on my podcast to talk about it and there's a lot of good information in there but it is just a I kind of, it's not the right way to say it's an idea, but it's not like they studied anyone. They've just said it's very based off like mechanistic data. Like, oh, you kind of low carbohydrates because the muscle has glycogen in it and it will make it look fuller. And then you try and kind of lower subcutaneous water retention by kind of manipulating the fluid intake and so on and so forth. But what I found to be the absolute key, especially for natural guys, because it's so much simpler as a natural bodybuilder because you're not messing around with compounds that impact your fluid retention. Fluid, like if you're retaining fluid truly as a natural bodybuilder, it's more than likely stress versus anything else. And then if you are, and you know the difference between kind of fluid retention and just fat. So what I'll say, first of all, is if you're shredded as a natural bodybuilder one week out from your show, you look incredible. Like you do look incredible. Even if you're a bit flat, you take like a little bit of a refeed. You just have like higher carbs for one day, like 200 more carbs or what have you. You'll look better the next day. You'll just look a bit fuller. And sure, you might hold on to a bit of water retention, but I just think as naturals, if you uh, are clever with your fatigue management, with your stress management, that's not really a big deal. And in peak week, you can really reduce those variables as well. So you can put yourself in a really good spot. So I think first of all, being shredded is the first ticket. Uh, if you're not shredded at the start of peak week, you ain't looking better in a week. <laughs> like there's yeah. just not, you're not going to be shredded by the end of the week. There's nothing you can do in a week that's going to transform your physique. You can, however, add the finishing, finishing touches. You can improve your physique by 5%. You can actually worsen your physique probably by like 25% uh, because <laughs> people fuck around with variables. Um, hopefully I can swear. That's all right. Uh, yeah, so no they, they mess around <laughs> with all these, these variables. And I mean, people can risk kind of being so dehydrated. They can, seizure and die like people have got themselves into real situations manipulating kind of sodium potassium and water so the first ticket is get shredded so you don't need to worry about doing too much because that's where people get themselves into a, a real issue and then for me the key is making small adjustments um, from your baseline plan that are measured and thought out and monitoring the physique every day so I'll get my uh, clients to send me photos multiple times through the day. It might be three times a day. In the morning, how are they looking after waking? After the training session, in the middle of the day, how are they looking? In the evening before bed, are they looking spilled over? Are they looking full? Are they looking still flat? How are they looking next day? Get that information. I'm kind of looking at their physique every day and then I'm manipulating things slightly. So what I like to do is keep things very simple. So, and I did this exact ap approach for myself. So I enter peak week shredded. And what I do with training is essentially taper off. So I kind of deload to reduce yeah. fatigue and stress. I do not want muscular soreness or damage because that's going to uh, blunt your ability to uptake carbohydrates and store glycogen. And it's also not going to be good for posing on stage. We're not trying to build muscle. We're not trying to retain muscle during this week. Well, we are retaining muscle, but it's not a thought. You're just trying to reduce stress via deloading so i deload my training might taper off cardio or taper off steps potentially if you have a high step count or a lot of cardio you're retaining fluid because of just the stress that you're putting through your legs so you might taper those off a little bit for me that and was uh, for me that was sorry to interrupt you but it's just fun i have to mention it 
I was walking 20,000 steps a day and doing 50 minutes of minutes of cardio at the end right now at that moment I did not have a coach and I think if I had a coach I would not uh, think like so fucked up <laughs> that that was necessary because it, it wasn't necessary I see that now but for me I was always thinking like I want my my legs need to be shredded but I was walking so much and I had so much inflammation in my legs and you know you I gotta say those podcasts of you with other people who are natural it inspired me to just I was always listening to that because there are not a lot of people I can talk about about natural bodybuilding like to get really to that level because sure. think people just do not realize how hard it is but that's really something that i experienced so it's really funny that you mentioned that yeah it's a, it's a like it's completely true like if people continue to train hard for example if you have a hard leg day your legs are just inflamed but let alone, like you said, just step a high step count. If you just tapered that down to like 15 steps, 15,000 steps, sorry, then like 12 and a half, then 10. And then maybe at 10, you're like, oh, my legs look much tighter. Like just that layer, that film of subcutaneous water retention has just kind of vanished. And now when you flex them, you can see all the muscle divisions. You can see like feathering through the quads potentially. Uh, yeah, a lot of people, unfortunately, like they might have the physique. This is what peak week is for, is removing these kind of, things that are masking the physique that you've already got during that period yeah. of time and just putting the finishing touches on so yeah stress reduction via training and then nutrition is quite simple i keep food pretty much the same like i don't want to introduce new foods that could completely like bloat you or um, like if you haven't eaten a certain food in a while don't start introducing it during your peak week you want to keep things pretty basic fiber i like to maybe taper down a lot of people are eating like loads of fruit and veg because they're like this is low calorie per bite food it keeps me nice and full but if there's a lot of fiber a lot of bloating maybe we reduce that down um, if they're having a lot of sweeteners and things those sometimes can cause bloating so you might want to reduce those down so those are the only things that i might taper down i certainly won't get rid of completely because a zero fiber diet also can cause problems <laughs> yeah uh, you become blocked up so food kind of uh foods will somewhat stay the same and if I increase foods, it will be through those that are very easy to digest, like a rice, for example. Protein, I pretty much keep static. We just keep that the same. It's there available to just maintain muscle mass, maintain muscle protein synthesis. Fat, again, we're already on probably a low fat diet at this point because we're trying to maximize carbohydrate intake for our training performance to be as high as possible. So fats, again, I kind of just keep steady for the most part. And then the key, and then, uh, sorry, fluids, I'll also keep pretty steady. Um, I'll have already been tracking those along with sodium and keep that steady too. potassium, which will mostly come through your fruit and veg. Again, you'll keep some of that in because potassium is also important as well as sodium for glycogen uptake and for just fluid balance within the body. So then the main variable I'm going to be changing is carbohydrates. So I, I view the body almost like a, a bucket. And what we're trying to do is just bring the bucket to full and not spilled over and not like slightly empty and flat. So we're just trying to fill the bucket. So every day I might start out with like, okay, they refeed on 500 grams of carbs and they look like however they look the next day. So maybe I'll start at like 400 grams and I'll look at them and I'll be like, yeah, you're still a bit flat. We'll go to 500. Okay, cool. That looks good. Maybe we maintain 500. And then maybe we're like, oh, it looks like actually you've dropped off some fatigue. Your scale weight's gone down and it looks like you could probably do with a bit more carbohydrate, put it to 550. And as you're having more carbohydrates as well, your ability to assimilate and store those and metabolize them may be increasing too. So you'll sometimes find, depending on the person, you might give them some carbs. They're just like, start upregulating because the body's just like, give me more, give me more, give me more. So you just, that's why it's so important to watch the physique. How's it looking in real time? Um, and just keep monitoring it and slowly adjusting things up. So for me, I would start some of my peak weeks on like 400 grams of carbs. And by the end of it, I was on like 700 800 grams of carbohydrates as we just linearly wow. load carbohydrates up and up and up. And I just be looking like ridiculously full and crisp. And as I increase carbohydrates, sodium will uptick a little bit too. Not a crazy amount, but just a little bit more because sodium helps for the glycogen storage. Yeah. And then fluids will also increase along with that too, but nothing crazy, just like nice small adjustments. And if we kind of overspill one day, it's easy. We know what did it, carbohydrates. We haven't been messing around with tons of variables. So we're not, not sure what did that to our look. 
we move carbohydrates up we just need to move them down so then that yeah. tightens them back up as they burn through those often i i see people carving up without water <laughs> what's your opinion on that because i think it just doesn't work that's what i have seen so far and uh it kind of makes sense in in my in my eyes but what did you see that a lot as well or it seems to be less practiced in natural bodybuilding now as people are starting to learn that that doesn't make sense <laughs> uh, <laughs> because essentially when you're trying to store glycogen every gram of glycogen is stored with three to four grams of water so if you're not consuming water you're not going to be able to store the glycogen and so you'll continue to just look flat like and that's not a good thing uh so you need to keep the fluid there um and you can also get into trouble by being dehydrated like you think what does it you think of dehydration you think of like a sponge a dehydrated like thing is just like like i don't know it's just shriveled it's not a good look you want yeah. nice full plump muscles and that's like you think about like a dry chicken breast, like you just dry it out. It just all shrivels up and it's horrible. Whereas you think of like poach a chicken breast or something, and it becomes nice and plump and full. That's, it's a muscle. Uh, so, yeah, carving up without fluids for natural bodybuilders does not make sense to me at all. Maybe some people find tapering their fluids a little bit makes them tighten up. They dry out a little bit. They have less of subcutaneous water retention, but not drinking at all. Yeah, that's no. a no bueno for me. All right. Interesting, interesting. This is, uh, I also wanted to talk about this. this is a clip for itself. Um, as someone, as you, who is a natural bodybuilder and uh, who has like a very good physique and build up very, uh, very good, you build up very good foundation. It's what I think. What is your opinion on main gaining? 